We've talked to Carolyn about the Alpine Fault and how Aotearoa sits on a plate boundary and this is Alice who is involved in communications around hazards, so helping people to prepare for the likes of an Alpine Fault earthquake. Now, the Alpine Fault's actually been known about for quite some time, Alice. Yeah, that's right. So we've actually known about the Alpine Fault for about 80 years, wow. which is longer than we've known about tectonic plates or even had satellite photographs that would let us get up and photograph the landscape from up above. And we've known about it largely due to the work of a very curious and clever man called Harold Wellman, who uh, first came to the coast as a gold prospector and then came back later as a geologist. And he um, was able to read the landscape and sort of find out where the boundary, laws, boundary line was up at the top of the rivers by looking at the different rock types. It's pretty cool. Mm, so he must have been really observant and having spent lots of time in Taipatini Westland, mm. he must have seen evidence. How did he prove to other people about his theory? Yeah, so Harold uh, found this rock, there's various rock types and came with, up with the theory that this was a really large um, plate boundary or very large fault line. And some of his friends and colleagues thought that was great, like very interesting, awesome, how great work. Others of his friends thought he was a bit crazy. <laughs> And they were like, there's no such thing as plate boundaries, Harold. Like, we need some more evidence. So Harold had to go away and do a lot of work around that and, and dig up, excuse the pun, dig up a lot more evidence and take it back to Wellington and really sort of prove that there was a large plate boundary fault here. And it's because of that hard work and his determination to really uncover what we what the landscape we live on that we have such a great understanding of our landscape today. Mm, so it's given um, us a head start in terms of understanding the countryside. So since then there's been a lot of work to find out more about the fault because we know it moves often. Um, can you tell us about how often can we expect the Alpine Fault to rupture? Yeah, so if we fast forward to the present day, uh, scientists from GNS Science have undertaken quite, a lot, quite um, extensive research down at the southern end of the Alpine Fault, just south of Haast, at two sites, and they've uncovered evidence of 27 earthquakes over 8,000 years which is quite a short amount of time, I suppose, in geological terms. But the most remarkable thing about that record is those earthquakes have happened really regularly over time. It's one of the longest and most regular records of earthquakes of anywhere in the world. And we're really lucky to have it again, so it can help us be better prepared for the next one. So when can we expect the next one? Yeah, so on average those earthquakes have happened roughly every 300 years. So the last one was around 1717. And so we're kind of in a space of time now where we need to start thinking about how we can be better prepared and, and understanding and sharing our knowledge so that we're all on the same page when that earthquake does happen. Mm, may not happen tomorrow, but it will happen eventually. Mm. Hey, thanks, Alice. No problem. Thank you.